procession, he paraded these powers. Goddamn hacker, that second time night that asshole was cut in. So that all the world might see the magnitude of his victory. All you've got to do is go at Calvary, take a good long look at the cross. Let it sink into your soul what happened on that tree. Thanksgiving giving me a head of here. Tell me about it. <laughs> Must took the hacker months to figure out how to do this. To this day, and the only thing that can stop the power of hell is the power of Christ. The only power we have against the forces of darkness is the blood atonement and the word of God and the preaching of the scripture and the power of the Holy Spirit of God. But my friend, that's all we need. We have everything we need to become absolute victors in this battle that rages on this earth. The battle that rages for your soul, for your mind, for your children, for your country, for everything that is dear to your heart. That battle is real. at the cross at Calvary, put his blood upon that tree, and that blood became the seal of the doom of Satan and every demon in hell itself. Amen. Blow it out of your ass. Well, there is an energy um, that uh, comes from a being called the Godhead, which is, I mean, we, we talk about God, but the Godhead is not um, a guy with a beard sitting on a cloud. It is a massive spirit, the basis of all creation. And coming out from this Godhead, round all creation, through all the stars, through all the planets and uh, everything else, is the life force, known as the light. And the Bible refers to the light. You have to imagine this at the cellular level of karma lodging in the cells and molecules and atoms of your being, flex as flex of dust or soot or crystallized substance that has a negative vibration. That is exactly how karma clogs our beings, our bodies, the earth, the water, the air. And uh, within this light are various other energies which have certain gifts. And these other energies have a frequency that is the same as all the colors. And turquoise actually is the same frequency as an energy called um, love and wisdom. Therefore, when you wear that color, you attract it. And that is why we get burdened, and that's why our vibrations go down. The definition of vibration, by the way, is the rate of the spin of the electron around the atoms of your being. That's the truth, and that's what you'll read about in the first Keeper of the Flame lesson. So what happens is that the density of our consciousness, because it's God's light, we're misqualifying, it accumulates as fine dust or smog between those wide open spaces of the electrons. Beloved mighty I am presence, beloved holy Christ self, beloved Saint Germain and beloved Zadkiel, Come forth now in the victory of the God flame. Seal us in the violet flame. Purge and purify us. Consume now all that is less than our Christ perfection. Transmute that energy and bless all life by its purity. Send it forth to our great causal body of love as the harvest of our good works on earth. 
the beings which we, we call the guys uh, told us about. You call them the guys? The, gu the guys, yeah. It's, mm. But the beings like... Uh, uh, Taro, Rakowski. Yeah, yeah, that's right. right. I would have, it's highly likely that I'm something to do with the whole process because I'm interviewing you. Well, it's, it's difficult because I'd need to check all this out because mm. you're throwing this at me and I need to sit down and check this out with the guys. But yeah. um, I would, I would. The other thing is, there is this great illusion, you know, that Jesus was born and stood up and said, I know who I am. It was revealed to him in stages. He was very, very close to beginning the mission which is described in the Bible, but not described brilliantly accurately, um, before he knew who he was. And when he came out, Terry, and said, I am the Son of God, I am an aspect of the soul of the Godhead incarnate because of things that need to be done on this planet urgently, Maybe that's a sign that maybe all the truth is not uh, in the hands of the traditional church that has been with us over all these thousands of years. Well, now, let me get the story right. The press claim that you claim to be the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yes, you see, the thing is that... Uh, you see, it's quite, it's quite funny, really. You know, 2,000 years ago, had a guy called Jesus sat here and said these same things, you would still be laughing. It's really, really funny that we've not really moved on that funny thing, Nicky, you know, um, the, the Bible actually predicts the coming of the Son of Man, the coming of the Son of God, um, at this time of great change. Well, no, right now? Yeah. Well, yeah, so, at this time of so great change. The Bible predicts you, in a way. Yeah, exactly. It, call, it, call, it calls the being the Son of Man. Where is that? So people. That is in the, the book of Revelations towards the end. Right. And it's also earlier on in, in, in some of the Gospels, too. Um, what do they expect this son of man to look like? Do they expect him to wear a beard and a white robe? Well, they don't expect him to be a Hereford United goalkeeper. Correct. But did they expect, the, the, the people 2,000 years ago didn't expect their son of God or whatever to be a carpenter's son, and he got the same reaction. You see, what it is, it's about incarnating into a body uh, that relates to the world as it is at the time. That's why Jesus was a carpenter's son and worked in, in, in Palestine. Why, why in this life? If I was you were a broadcaster. Exactly. Why was I taken into the communications? You were taught self-discipline in sport. Correct. Mm. And all that this thing. is how it's done. Yeah. And um, so I'm comfortable talking to you. I'm comfortable on television. I'm comfortable in broadcasting, which, which, which is a great help to get over the truth, as the world is at the moment where the media is the vehicle to do it. Um, you are given the gifts, and we're all given the gifts, uh, that, that, that uh, we need in particular lifetimes and at this time in this lifetime i need certain abilities to um be comfortable uh, on the media and know the media and and that's what's been given to me uh, I, s I have a question i saw yeah. on, on your poster you of the of your lecture yeah i don't i saw i, don't, I, don't, I, saw I the, don't do the posters the, the six six pointed star on the on the line do you think it's a positive uh, symbol? Well, that is um, an artist that put that together. And but it's a symbol yep. uh, like Helena Blavatsky used and uh, Satanic Lodges used well, also. You know, symbols don't have to be uh, all <coughs> negative. I mean, I, I didn't have anything to do with that poster. I didn't have anything to do with the, um, uh, the, the symbol. It was done by an artist. But, um, you know, Symbols can be positive, they can be negative. You can, you can have a symbol of the dove and it can represent peace. And you can have a symbol of the dove and it represents the goddess of, of Babylon. You know, it, 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 it's the intent behind it. Anyway, is, is, I'm is naked. This, nice to meet yeah. you. Yeah. It's the same, the same thing with, the, with your teachings about the, like the solar logos and yeah. the things like uh, Lucy's Trust and the Spain you wrote in her books. Okay. Okay. Thanks very much. How are you? Alice Bailey, load of bollocks. Right. Look, look that, at bollocks. Lucy's trust, load of bollocks. Do yeah. not do, do, you do listen. Other no. You do, know do, that. do not confuse knowledge <laughs> with the use of knowledge. Knowledge is just knowledge. It's the use of it. So you can use this knowledge in a malevolent way, and you can use this knowledge in a positive way. But, but she's don't, get caught, in, extra, don't get caught in black and white, mate. Don't yeah, get caught in a black and white world where everything's good or bad. Externalization, like the, this the, 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 the malevolent use of um, esoteric knowledge 
is what these secret societies are involved in. It can be used in a very positive way. If you want to believe something different, then please be my guest. But I've just been talking for nine hours and I'm knackered. See ya. All the best. Bye, Bye. David. Nice keep, to meet you. Keep the engine. Well, we'll send you an email. Yeah, great. Thanks for the evening. Well, the day. Yeah. Hey, you are great. Don't get caught in a box. Yeah, but it's the same ideology. Like the New World box, Order. Mate. Don't get caught in a box. Open your mind. was a very controversial figure. He's a friend of mine. I've met him, hung out with him, been involved with him. He's a very nice guy. Uh, he's a trailblazer. He's written a bunch of best-selling books. So what we have is an inversion of the, of the natural order. That's their world. I mean, this is where the religions talk about, you know, the, the, the hell and all that stuff. And what they're doing is seeking to change our world into theirs so they can take it over. goes around, comes around. You may be a wonderful person, you may be very sincere, you may have done wonderful things, you break the law, and what goes around, comes around. There's no escaping divine retribution, period, because it's impersonal. It may take a couple of weeks for it to come back to you. It may take a month or two. But whatever it is you put out there will come back. Bet on it. Jordan Maxwell, jordanmaxwellshow.com, joining us as we get ready to finish up 2016. Uh, he's been predicting the incredible turmoil that's coming, what's happening, but also the awakening to counter that, which the Illuminati will try to take over. But it's always a race. Well, the Bible says, get behind me, Satan. The devil's always, or that system that calls itself the devil, for always trying to counterfeit what the human mind develops. That's what we've always got to be trailblazing to get ahead of it. That's my view. But till the bottom of the hour, you've got the floor. Before I even interrupt, or I will, Jordan, get rolling here uh, with, with where we are in history. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you, uh, Alex, for allowing me to be on. I mean, what do you make, though? I mean, I mean, I think this is a real movement against global government. I think it's a human awakening. Obviously, it's got some infiltrators. It's got problems. But I think it's got the, uh, the elite seriously scared. I think so too, and I'm amazed how, and truly I'm amazed how I, I was talking about this stuff some you know, 56 years ago, and now to see the public finally getting it, finally, finally getting it, uh, I think, wow, it's, it's incredible. Maybe there is hope for the human race if Americans wake up and start doing something with their life instead of just listening to, because uh, like, uh, the, uh, there was a great quote that said, "They will find it difficult. They who have uh, ex they who have accepted the authority as truth, rather than the truth as the authority." So if people begin to wake up and find out that the authorities are not telling you the truth, that's why they're in power, to lie to you. That's why people who are manipulating you, we call them con men, because they are, they are involved in a conspiracy. They're con men. They're just la laughing at you and mocking you.
So every time you got somebody else that pompous and arrogant who's the main star of something, it's almost as if the universe pulls a rug out from underneath of them. I just think that's interesting and funny. And there's a lot more cases like that. And uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, we've got, the, we've got some chumps that think they own me and they own my name. They own my, my work and they own everything. Well, they're gonna find out there's a God that's in charge of the universe, not them. Oh, where they're going, where the kid's going, uh, they don't need spiritual awakening. Gentlemen, have you ever heard or read uh, Mrs. Blavatska? She's uh, Alina Petrovna Blavatsky. Right. Yes. right. Yes, I have all of her works. You have? Yes. Well, that's why. Yes. I no, think no. her 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 best work was Isis Unveiled, Part Two, which is uh, theology. Right. Science. And uh, that was an exceptional uh, work. I think that Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, the Russian mystic, was a very wise and perceptive lady, and she has some very profound uh, knowledge, uh, obviously, in her academic uh, uh, achievements were, were extraordinary, and so I have a very high respect for the work of Helena Blavatsky. Now, very quickly, this is Madame Blavatsky. Isn't she a pleasant-looking soul? Doesn't she just look like she exudes the love of Jesus? She was the founder of the Theosophical Society. This woman lo worships Lucifer. She believes Lucifer is God. She created the Theosophical Society. Adolf Hitler came along and he was raised up by these people, financed by these people. He was a Theosophist. He read, now Madame Bovonsky wrote a number of books, the best known being The Secret Doctrine. And Hitler is reported to have read The Secret Doctrine on a daily basis. Being a, a very spiritually inclined, past life regressionist type of person, she has you lay on the table and take your rings off and you watch and she's setting up the candles and lighting candles and doing some sort of a little ritual thing. And I'm just laying there watching her. Paul says she's great, we'll find out. And uh, she's talking to someone. And I'm laying there watching her and she's talking to someone. And I said, who are you talking to? And she said, oh, I'm talking to your friends who brought you here. And I said, oh, okay, brought me to your house? She said, no, 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 your friends who brought you to the earth, you've come here from another place, and they have brought you here to do something. I said, I've often wondered about that. Where did I come from? I mean, really, what am I doing here? And she says, well, and I'm just telling you what she said. She said, um, they are Pleiadian, Pleiadians, and they have brought you here to do something and uh, you are ultimately going to be a um, emissary was the word, an emissary for them. They're going to channel through you. They're going to use you and they will speak through you. summoned the UFOs back at, back in the day when that guy showed you and gave you the Charles M. Fort book. That's when it started. You're a true believer, Jordan. I've always thought that. You think that what you're doing is good, but it, it's just something that you can obviously tell that those angels weren't good. The message isn't good. You are being used to, to spread the one message that the New World Order does really care about, and that is turn away from Jesus Christ at all costs. Three Rivers couple is in jail tonight, accused of false imprisonment and sexual battery. The victim, a 19-year-old woman whose name is not being released, called Tulare Sheriff's deputies to report she had been sexually assaulted. It happened yesterday on Encina Road in Three Rivers. 
Detectives say the woman went to the home of Stanton LeVay and his girlfriend, Michelle Nicely. They said the victim smoked marijuana with the couple, but when she tried to leave, LeVay and Nicely tackled her. Investigators say the suspects bound her with tape, forced her to watch pornography, and committed sexual battery. Both were arrested without incident. Spiritual confusion. Yeah, has the spirits. The supernatural experiences, the dreams, the so-called angels that you claim you have, have they guided you to the face of God, the heart of God, the gift of immortality, the realization that right now dwelling within you by the Spirit of the infinite God, you have the gift of eternal life? Have they guided you to the real revelation of Christ, or have they given you, have they substituted the real Christ? for a pocket-sized little rabbit spirit of Jesus. See, these spirits cannot lead you to the heart and the face of God. They are not from Him. They are not of Him. They are in rebellion. They serve another, an ancient fallen cherub. Got two of each animal to come to him on foot from all over the world. And he willingly boarded the boat and got in the cages. And they sailed away for 40 days and 40 nights, and civilization began anew. Eight year old retired boys, there you go. Oh! We are no longer accepting the idea of Satan, like culturally. Culturally, Satan was an accepted thing hundreds of years ago. It was parallel. Like, like if you looked at the mentions of Satan and the mentions of God, they were right up there together. You're blaming Satan on the bad things and you're praising God for the good things. That's no longer the case. We will one day look back at 2015 like what a bunch of fools. What a bunch of ridiculous people that were still, they, they had this incredibly complicated society and this wonderful access to information, but yet they were still shackled down by ideology and killing each other over religion and ancient superstitions that, that dictated their behaviors. Like what a weird time to be in, they, they'll look at. They'll look at us now in 2015 and they'll say, what a strange time, this, this adolescent period of, of, of enlightenment, where they're, they're, still, they're still concentrating on stupid shit, and the fucking president of the United States can openly talk about God, and, every, and, no, and no one goes, what is God? What are you saying? Like, what are you saying? You think Jesus came back from the dead? What, what do you think? Do you think someone walked on water? Do you believe in a literal translation? One of the greatest proliferations of occult, spiritually confusing New Age. Well, occult revelation poured out 50s and 60s and 70s to this very day. And in the context of the spiritual confusion comes the message, listen, comes, comes the reception of their new world order, their plan. Listen, if you haven't read the plan, the Ascended Masters guided Alice Bailey in the writing of a book. They inspired her and guided her to write the book, The Externalization of the Highland. In other words, the manifestation of the Great White Brotherhood. The externalization of the hierarchy is all about how these beings guided and revealed partial or bits of themselves and much of their plan, how to bring the spiritual confusion, how to even infiltrate the body of Christ, changing it, corrupting it, turning it, redefining its terms to fit this new age, new world. Is that what you've embraced? Do you know others who've embraced it?
next piece of news is very, very important. Conservatism, you could say, would be George Washington, a very traditionalist, but Americana. And you've got super extreme wild freedom with Jefferson, who was the head of the Illuminati for a while, helped launch the French Revolution, barely got out of France. They wanted to kill him. He said, whoa, Washington's right. This is really bad. So that's a lot, big, complex, long history there. And you're going, the Illuminati? Jefferson was good? He's the real Illuminati, folks. And so what you see as Masons today is just those schools going on. And there have been hundreds of different variants and groups and Rosicrucian orders within the Masons and the Illuminati uh, founded in Germany was a counter Illuminati to the real Illuminati that was just called itself the Enlightenment and then in Latin Illuminati, but it, it didn't call itself Sir Francis Bacon, all of that hundreds of years before the Jesuit priest, Adam Weishaupt. The modern Illuminati was a Catholic spinoff in an attempt to take over the Illuminati and the Rosicrucians. And, and yes, undoubtedly my family on both sides on the Mayflower, hardcore Protestants, you could say Rosicrucians. This country was founded by real Rosicrucians, not the Rosicrucians you see out there today. And so undoubtedly, uh, if you want to say it, I mean, I would say I come out of a classical Enlightenment family of what you would call real Illuminati, uh, real Enlightenment. So it was kind of like, oh, really, you're going to have an Enlightenment over in America? You're going to have a Christian Enlightenment? We're going to have one with hot chicks and, you know, devil parties. And so that's all it was, was a financed attempt to take down our real operation. Now... Continuing, I say our real operation is my family on both sides all over the place right back to the start of it. I'm very, very, very proud of that. It's a war on culture. It's a war on ideas. It's a war on classical liberalism that the robber barons don't know what to do with. And so they've been funding this for 100 years, getting control of the liberal movements that actually threatened the establishment. You know, Thomas Jefferson liberalism. Tell you, when I was a kid, I read Robert Anton Wilson all this shit. And here we are, we're standing here, we're talking about this shit, and it's real. <laughs> and I figure, is this guy bullshitting me? He says we can talk to aliens, we can talk to people from Syria. Is he talking crap? He said Alistair Crowley's got methods for contacting alien intelligence and for changing the world. Is he talking crap? So I did it. And no, he's not talking crap. <laughs> and we can all do it. And this is. Uh, by way of trying to demolish the counterculture and replace it with something useful, we're just going to start here and see where we get to. The struggle is over, which is we're all here. What do we do next? There was no apocalypse. There was no Christ. There was no rapture. There is nothing. All this stuff is shit. <laughs> Let us become plex creatures, complex, Superplex, able to take on new personality traits, able to take on new ideas, able to adapt, able to extend our boundaries into what was previously the enemy territory, until the point where we become what we once called our enemy and they are us and there is no distinction. <laughs>